Element X has five major isotopes, which are listed in this table below. And this table gives us the percent natural abundance or the relative abundance of each of these isotopes. And we're also given the masses of each of these isotopes. So what we're going to do is take the mass of each isotope and multiply by its percent abundance. And that will give us each of their weighted contrib contributing mass toward the average mass, which is what we're going to use to match up uh, with the periodic table to see what X is. All right. So I'm going to move all of these uh, percent numbers, the decimal over to the left two spots, and that'll get rid of these decimals. And that's just what I prefer doing, turn them into decimal forms. You can use your percent key on your calculator if you want, but uh, just a habit of mine, I just move these over twice, and now these are in decimal forms. Now when I punch these in my calculator, I am going to write the uh, punch in the trailing zeros, just because uh, when, when you get good at this, or when you do enough of these, you won't have to do it step, break it up into steps like I'm about to show you. You can just use your calculator and determine how many placeholders your final uh, answer should have. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to put them in my calculator. So here we go. The first isotope, X46, has a mass of 45.95232. Multiply that by the percent abundance, which is 0 0.08. Again, I'm just going to put the zeros there because when I what I'm saying is not, just by looking at my calculator, I know my uh, number of sig figs I should have is 3.67 or 6, 3.68, which to me I'm just I know that that's two decimal places. Um, I'm going to write that down here, 3.68, right? So because this one only had three sig figs and this one has way more, but I answered can't have more than the number with the least sig figs. All right, next one, 46. 0.951764 times 0 0.730. Again, just off that screen, I, I can see I have three sig figs. And so when I'm doing all of these at the end, I can I can see, well, that one's that one tell the first number tells me I have two decimals. The second one also tells me I have two decimals, and then my final answer is going to have two decimals. So I can do all of that in my calculator at some point. Um, but right now I'm going to continue to write down every step on, on the screen here for you. So it's 3.43. Right, and then off to uh, X48. has a mass of 47.9475. Point seven three eight zero. This one, this one's got four significant figures. Right, this one's going to make up the contribute the greatest amount of mass because it makes up almost three fourths. You know, it's almost seventy five percent of all the isotopes of X is X forty eight. All right, so it's three five point three nine. Looking nice and pretty right now. They they all have two decimal places. All right. So if I if I didn't if I didn't do that, I, the calculator is not very obvious. Looking at my calculator screen. All right. I still forty nine is forty eight point nine four seven eight four one times point zero five five zero. Uh, again, my this, this number is going to have three significant figures, so it's 2.69. All right, and our last one is uh, isotope X50, and that has a mass of 49.944792 times 0 0.0540. And that one's going to have three significant figures, so it's 2.70. Right, nice and pretty. So now, now it's time to add it up. Here's what I'm saying is, you you can easily see because when you're adding or subtracting, you have different significant figure rules. It's not the number of sig figs; it's the 
it's the measurement with the least precise uh, precision. And they all have the same precision because they all have their final digit in the, all right, here's the ones place, here's the tenths place, here's the hundredths place. So they all have precision. They all have uh, significant digits into the hundredths place. So my answer is going to have that same precision. In other words, it's going to have two decimal places. All right, very nice. So I'm not going to add these numbers up because these were all rounded, right? I'm, I'm going to use the better numbers stored in my calculator. So, um, all right, there's the first number. Add that to the second number. Add that to the third number. Add that to the fourth. And add that to the final one. All right, so there's my... Uh, there's the best answer I have, and I know there's going to be two decimal places, so it's 4788. 47.88. Now, if you were to add up these all rounded numbers, you would have, you you likely would have been off a little bit, right? Like nine plus nine is 18 plus that's 21, that's 29. So you would have been off by 0 0.01. So it really wouldn't have made a difference in this problem because uh, it wasn't asking, it wasn't asking for for you to calculate that, well, in, indirectly it was, because now we're going to use this to match it up with a periodic table, but it doesn't have to be exact. There's only going to be one element with that atomic mass. So uh, let me let me grab one for you. I'll be right back. All right, so I like this website. It's, uh, it's uh, applets.kcvs.ca and all that other stuff. Uh, you can use your regular periodic table, this one. This one has all this isotope information as well over here. So the uh, answer is titanium. It's the it's the one that has the closest matching atomic mass, which is the weighted average. You also, if you click on, there's a link for more information, and you get this stuff here. So notice, if you replace the TIs, the symbol for titanium, with X, well, what do you know? You get, you get almost identical as this table. So... Uh, the answer is titanium.